Hello everybody, you are listening to Feed Your Mind. The Aurora Borealis is not what we have been told. In this video, we will cover much proof that science has been giving us the wrong explanation about what the Aurora Borealis is. They don't really want you to know what it is because if you found out, it could change the world. What really tipped me off to the Aurora Borealis being much more than what we have been told is it's pretty obvious. I mean, all you have to do is just look at it and understand that this is not a normal thing. Science wants you to just believe, oh, it's just a normal thing, but it really is much more than that. And I've pretty much narrowed it down to two possibilities. Now, the thing is, the original scientific explanation with the sun does not have to be dismissed completely. I have a hypothesis on the Aurora Borealis that includes the sun and the moon as well. And it also, of course, includes the North Pole, being something much more than what we have been told. When I see a compass needle pointing to the North, I feel that it's something much more significant than what science has been trying to tell us as well. Because to me, this seems like more of a spiritual thing going on here, or something of a very incredible magnitude of power that is being generated in this North area that is attracting the magnets to the North. You see, I've broken down this Aurora Borealis down to two possible options. One's more scientific leaning, the other's more spiritual leaning. But when it comes down to it, you can really put both of the hypotheses together and create one theory. And so the scientific explanation I have is that the sun and the moon is being generated by this powerful force in the center of the earth. This powerful force in the center, I'd like to know what you guys think this thing is, but I believe it could be like a generator type thing that is operating the sun and the moon and creating the electromagnetic force that propels the sun and the moon around the circle earth. And this energy that is being used is creating this aurora borealis and it operates by how the glass dome firmament interacts with this electromagnetic current. And the current creates this electromagnetic field that we see as the aurora borealis, kind of like those glass balls that they sell you with the electricity and you get to put your hands on it and the electricity creates this current, creating an energy field of light, kind of like the aurora borealis. My other theory is a bit more spiritual because there's lots of information coming out in ancient books, including the Bible and other texts, about heaven being full of this energy that is a green-like energy. The Bible describes this energy as a rainbow, but this rainbow was mostly green. We discussed a lot of this in my last video called What is Outside of the Dome Firmament Explained in Detail. So make sure to check out that video to get all caught up on what this green energy coming from another dimension really is. And so the center is kind of like a portal area where the green energy manifests out into this world. And this green substance is what we see as the aurora borealis. And it definitely could be spiritual in nature of what we're seeing. And so let me know in the comments section what theory you're gravitating towards more. Is it the scientific theory I presented where this force is propelling the sun and the moon creating this electromagnetic type energy field that we see as the aurora borealis? Or are you leaning more towards the spiritual side of things where this energy is leaking into our world from the center area and it's really the energy that's coming from another dimension? And so yes, the aurora borealis can be seen both in the Antarctic and the Arctic area. But the thing is, when it comes to the Antarctic area, we don't really know for sure, for sure, because nobody's really allowed to the Antarctic area, so we're taking their word for it. But let's just go with that for a while in this video, and let's say it's confirmed that you can see the aurora borealis in the Antarctic. Well, with the dome shape of the firmament, the activity coming from that center could easily travel to the outer edge and from the inner edge, where the power source really is. And so with both the spiritual and the scientific explanations I presented in the video, the dome firmament is the connector which would present the aurora borealis on either the inner or the outer circle of flat earth. So that explains that. And so let's dig more into this aurora borealis and don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And so they say this aurora borealis appears out of this north garden of Eden area. And so the word aurora actually reminds me of the word aura. And the aura is described as this electromagnetic energy field that surrounds people. It's supposed to be invisible. And they say this aura is actually associated with your frequency vibration and your feelings, your emotions, and your behavior. And so is this aurora borealis named after this aura 
energy field. And so you can see coming from the north these magnificent green lights in the sky. And it's very mysterious indeed, and I don't believe it's what science has been telling us it is. The North Pole is the only magnetic center. We're going to talk about that here pretty soon. Getting closer. The mountain of God is there. Directly above Polaris, the throne of God. I believe Polaris is marking where the throne is. Sun and the moon move around us. Antarctica is the ice wall. No matter where you go here, you can circumnavigate the world going this way because your compass is always going to point back to the north. So as you go this way to the west, it's always going to point you back. People go, How? whoa, it's got to be a ball because the people have made it around the world. Well, folks, I don't know what the deal is. You can, you can go around the ball or you can go around the dish. I don't know what the big confusion's about, right? But see, when you realize this, that right up here, the throne of God sits, it makes something else very interesting. It's called the Aurora Borealis. Now this is directly from the Aurora forecast. But I, I, I found it interesting that if the throne of God is, is seated above this dome here at the center, the high point, and it says that there is an emerald rainbow around the throne, this is a direct picture of what they say the Aurora was doing. It's almost a complete circle all the way around above the North Pole. And it just happens to be, for the most part, green. Here's a picture of it. So, well, Pastor Dean, why can they see it sometimes in the southern, you know, at the Antarctica? You want me to tell you why? Because it starts at the top of the dome. As the dome moves out, it radiates out, and it, you can't see it. And then it goes down, and by the time it reaches the bottom, you can see it. I saw a girl who said she, she saw for the first time in her life when she saw this was not a Christian. She was not born again. She was not saved. She looked up and she, was, she saw the aurora. And she said, I just started weeping and fell to my knees. I believe it's a manifestation of the glory of God. They give us all this bull crap about the sun and... Uh, just happens to be green. And you know, folks, and the writers of the, uh, the, writers of the New Testament and the, the Hebrew prophet Ezekiel and the writer, you know, the apostle John, guess what? They never went to the North Pole. How would they know to say? The Bible talks about heaven being in the sides of the north. Remember, remember in... Uh, in Isaiah 14, Lucifer said, when he said, look, he said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. He said, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. The north has always been identified with where heaven is. Yeah, this is a great story. I mean, how many times do we have events in our life that science can't explain what's going on? And that's exactly what has been, uh, been talked about, discovered in the last year. Let's explain. It could be in the family of the auroras. We've all seen the beautiful ribbons of green that dance across the skies, the northern lights, the southern lights, this picture taken from the International Space Station. And most of the time we see the hues of green, sometimes hues of purples or blues. It's rare to see red, but that happens. This could be in the family, but we're not exactly sure. So let's explain why the auroras occur. First of all, surface of the sun, solar flares send the radiation and solar winds toward the Earth. Earth's magnetic field takes the electrons and guides them toward the poles. And when those electrons collide with our atmosphere, we have the, the, the lights, the auroras. We see them in the north the aurora borealis, the northern lights. We have them in the south, the aurora australis and the southern lights. But a group of aurora chasers in Alberta, Canada started noticing this. What in the world is this? But how interesting. Is it in the family of the Aurora? Some scientists say yes, some say no. Uh, it's, it's not as hot. I mean, obviously, the, the, the temperatures are different. So again, what could this be? So there's always something more than what we see. There's always going to be something more in the world and science that we yeah. can't explain. And that's great for the little ones of the world. You know, that, get involved. Uh, that's incredibly fascinating.
I was out on the sea ice and suddenly off of Observation Hill comes rolling these just waves, waves of green, like fairy dust, like a giant curtain of fairy dust just kind of undulating over me that filled the whole sky and just moved in waves across. And I thought e this is either what it looks like if aliens are about to abduct you because it looks just like that green stuff coming down and almost like you feel like you could reach up and touch it. Or if you're a person who believes in heaven, maybe this is what you see when you go to heaven, I'm not sure. Uh, but it was really an emotional, life-changing experience for me. I mean, I really found myself not realizing I had done it when I figured out where my body position was. I was actually on my knees and I was crying. Like, that's how beautiful it was to me. month of June and right now it's the middle of the day. grew up in a very rural area, so I could see the stars very well in rural Minnesota. And I've been in the mountains in, you know, Colorado, and I thought, wow, the sky looks beautiful. But I never knew a star could flash like fluorescent pink, fluorescent green, fluorescent blue, white, flor and like just in that rotation, just blink, 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 one star. Like, it looks like a strobe light to me, and not just one. There's a lot of them that look like a strobe light up there. And you would never know. I, you'd never know what the sky looks like. <laughs> It's it's wonderful.
I loved the 24 hours of darkness. Maybe on full moon nights and other nights I would see the mountains, but sometimes I'd forget the mountains were even there. And so my entire world was just in the little spaces and, you know, walking around. It really does change your perception. Towards the end of summer, the thing I was most looking forward to was seeing darkness again. Like, I just wanted to see some nighttime. And now that it's nighttime, I, I don't really miss the day that much right now.